please join in our entrance hymn, O God Beyond All Praising. The words to all the songs done today are found on the parish website under bulletin and music. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke to his friends. Does not the human being have a hard service on earth? And are they not their days like the days of a laborer? Like a slave who longs for the shadow and like a laborer who looks for their wages, so I am allotted months of emptiness and nights of misery are a, por a portion to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I rise? But the night is long, and I am full of tossing until dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle, and come to their end without hope. Remember that my life is a breath, my eye will never again see good. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting, for an obligation is laid upon me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For I, if I do this of my own will, I have a reward, but it will not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission, and then what then is my reward? Just this, that in my proclamation, I may make the gospel free of charge 
so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that I might by all means save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I may share in its blessing. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As soon as Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever, and they told Jesus about her at once. He came and took her by the hand and lifted her up. Then the fever left her, and she began to serve them. That evening at sunset, they brought to Jesus all who were sick or possessed with demons, and the whole city was gathered around the door. And he cured many who were sick with various diseases, and cast out many demons. And he would not permit the demons to speak, because they knew him. In the morning, while it was still very dark, Jesus got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. And Simon and his companions hunted for him. When they found him, they said to him, Everyone is searching for you. He answered, Let us go on to the neighboring towns, so that I may proclaim the message there also. For this is what I came out to do. And Jesus went throughout Galilee, proclaiming the message in their synagogues, and casting out demons. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we have a read, the first reading from the book of Job. And the book of Job is about trying to figure out suffering. Trying to figure out why suffering exists. Trying to figure out why God allows suffering. And isn't, after all, that something throughout humanity and even today, is that we, that seems to be one of the gravest problems that confront us as human beings in our human life here on earth, is why illness, why suffering? I mean, we've heard it said before, I'm sure you've heard it said many times before, it's like, why does God allow this to happen? Perhaps why is God allowing this this to happen to me? Why is it happening to a family member? Why Why do young, good people die young? All these questions that we have that people want to know. Unfortunately, or fortunately, however you want to look at it, I cannot give you an answer to why. I can't do that. But what I can say is that suffering when done in the light of our faith, when done with Jesus Christ, and allowing our, bringing our suffering to the cross of Jesus, then there's meaning to suffering. And after all, isn't that what we're looking for, meaning? Viktor Frankl, a wonderful writer, 
wrote Man's Search for Meaning. And in the book, it's about Viktor Frankl's experience in the concentration camps during World War II. And I invite all of you to, if you can get, find the book, it's an easy book, it's an easy read. It's a great book. One of his premises is that those who survived the concentration camps, they had a meaning, a purpose. Their purpose and meaning was to see family and friends again. So they had this meaning. So for them, the suffering that they were undergoing, the torture that they were undergoing, there was meaning, and the meaning was, I have to get through this to get to my family, to be with family. We who may be suffering, we who may be ill, when we bring meaning to that suffering, then we can start to live with the suffering. I'm not saying we go out and look for suffering. I'm not saying that at all. But what I am saying is that when we allow ourselves to bring our suffering to Jesus Christ, when we allow ourselves to allow Christ into our life and our sufferings, that is when we can start to find meaning. That's when we can start to find hope. That's when we can start, hopefully stop saying, why me? And understand that God has given us who suffer, us who have illness, a great role in the Catholic faith. A great role in bringing salvation to others. We see in the Gospel passage today that Jesus, God, just doesn't, is outside. He goes into Simon Peter's home. He heals Simon Peter's mother-in-law. And he heals all those who they come to bring with them. So God does not, Jesus does not, does not heal from far away. But Jesus comes to heal and give us peace and strength person to person one-on-one. -on -one. An intimate relationship that the Lord has with us. He meets us where we are. We don't have to go out looking. Jesus is coming to us and looking for us. And the great thing is, is that Jesus is not healed for his own glory. But Jesus heals for others. Because as we can see, once Simon Peter's mother is healed, she just doesn't sit down and have a nice little glass of wine. But rather she starts to serve. Healing and suffering is a great service that we can do. We all know the passage that pray for laborers in the vineyard. There's not a lot of laborers in the vineyard. Pray for more laborers. And always when we think about that, we think of priests that we need to have more priests. And that's not necessarily wrong, pray for more priests. But in many ways, those who labor in the vineyard, those who labor to bring the message of God, are those who are sick, who are suffering or ill. Because as I said, they have this wonderful role to help people on their way to salvation. Those who are sick and suffering allow others to help. Allow others to show that you know what? If you are ill, if you are suffering, you still have value. You are still an important, intrinsically important part of human society. Because unfortunately what happens, and we can do it ourselves if we are suffering or ill, we can think we have no value, we have no worth, that we don't want to burden people and all those things. And we can see this in euthanasia, physician-assisted suicide. Why do the majority? Because I don't want to be a burden on others. I don't want others to see me suffer. That is not good. Because suffering does have meaning. It allows us to be a powerful witness to the grace of Jesus Christ. 
It allows us to show that I still have a valuable role, even if I'm sick, even if I'm dying, even if I'm suffering, I have a valuable role in showing others what they need to do to be saved through Jesus Christ. Because others are more than willing to help. For the most part, family members don't see a suffering, dying, or sick person as a burden. They see the person as someone who is loved, not only by God, but by themselves. They see a person who has value in life, who has brought good things to family and friends. And they want to help. If you want any proof of that, remember Pope St. John Paul II, the last years of his life. What a powerful witness his suffering was. The saint, the Pope, could not speak, could not do a lot of things, but he was there showing the world the dignity that there is in suffering and illness. That it does not mean that life is over, that it does not mean that you have no intrinsic value anymore. But rather you have the power to bring that message of love and mercy that the Lord has for us to others. To allow others to help, as I said, to work out their salvation. That is what brings meaning. There's a phrase, in my sufferings, I give to the church what's lacked in the sufferings of Jesus. In my suffering, I can bring good. In my illness, I can bring good. I think I've shared this in the parish here before. My first year as a priest at St. Paul's in Burlington. I went to visit this lady that had terminal cancer. She was about in her 40s or 50s. And every time I would go to visit her, it was like she was visiting me. It was like I was the one who was sick. She was a powerful, powerful witness for me, a young priest, and still for me today as an older priest, of faith. So one day, she comes to, says to me, Father, I never ask God why he's doing this to me. I figure he gave me this cancer because I can handle it and someone else couldn't. And I was like, wow, I wish I had that kind of faith. What a wonderful witness. But you know what we think of? A witness to the faith, to the love of Jesus Christ. So I beg you, I implore you, I say to you, for those who are suffering, especially through COVID, for those who are ill, we are praying for you. Allow us to help you. You are not a burden on anyone but rather a powerful witness for all of us and how to deal as Job dealt with suffering, with pain and loss, through faith in Jesus Christ, through allowing us to work out our salvation in the Lord by helping you to the best of our ability. You are worthwhile, and that's a great thing. That God is there for you to help you. And that's the great thing about the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. God coming to you to say, look, I've not forgotten you. I've come here to bring you strength and grace to be able to deal with the suffering. So bring it to me on the cross and we together can bring meaning. So we can bring good from this bad. That is the great news of our faith. Is that even in suffering, even in illness, we are witnesses to the Lord's love for us. We are witness to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ for, by, for saving us. But most of all, we get that sense, we get that knowledge, we get that grace. 
that you are loved by God and the community, that you are worthwhile to us, you have intrinsic value to us, and that you do not need to worry about being a burden on us, but rather to rejoice in the fact that we all together, through suffering and illness, are helping each other to bring meaning to suffering. And that meaning is bringing others to the cross of Christ so that all may be with God in heaven when it is our time to meet him. Together, let's proclaim the faith that makes us one. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us in faith call upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ the Son from the dead, as we pray for the salvation of the living and the dead. The response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may be strengthened by the Spirit in its <clears throat> ministry of spreading the good news of Jesus throughout the world, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the souls of Maria Manera, Alagin Tila, Stanislav Smurd, and intentions of all parishioners for whom this Mass is offered, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For a safe and COVID-free reopening of our schools, all our principals, teachers, staff, and students as they return to their classes, we pray. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. That all who despair because of a past abortion may open their hearts to repentance and the merciful forgiveness of the Lord who heals the brokenhearted, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That Christians who are enduring persecution for their faith in many lands will carry the word of God in their hearts, giving them courage, perseverance, hope, comfort, and inner peace, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That the sick throughout the world may have the strength and wisdom to unite their sufferings to those in Christ and obtain his peace and healing, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer that the members of our parish community who have died may be welcomed into God's kingdom. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. May the prayer of those who cry to you benefit the souls of your servants, O Lord. Free them, we pray, from all their sins and make them sharers in your redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please join in our offertory hymn, Like a Shepherd. <clears throat> One. <clears throat> like a shepherd, he feeds his flock and gathers the lambs in his arms, holding them carefully.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all of this holy church. O Lord our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed us in your own image and entrusted the whole world to our care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, we might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience we had lost your friendship, you did not abandon us to the dominion of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father Most Holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sore full of heart, joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. He sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe. 
so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ for the celebration of this great mystery which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broken, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, Wayne, his auxiliary, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant, O merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your apostles and saints in your kingdom. There with the whole of creation, Freed from the corruption of sin and death, we may glorify you through Christ our Lord, whom we bestow on the world. Oh, that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, Informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours yours now now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word of my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ.
saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Once again, thank you for joining us this morning on the live streaming of our Mass. It's always good to have you here, and hopefully shortly we will be here in person where we can celebrate Mass together as well. I just want to assure you that during the time of the pandemic and COVID that we will have live streaming of the Mass at 1015, even if when parishioners come back to come to Mass in person, we will still have the live streaming, so you do not need to worry about that. As a reminder, on February 15th, we begin our parish consecration to St. Joseph. Since it is the year of St. Joseph, uh, Father Greg and I thought it'd be a wonderful opportunity to consecrate our parish to St. Joseph. So the book is, I think, called Consecration to St. Joseph by Father Calloway. And I, I hope you can join us. It's $18.99 for the hard copy and $9.99 for a Kindle on Amazon, so it's not bad. The way it will go is simply that it is basically a self-directed consecration. The book has every day a little bit to read. I think it's, uh, Father said it was about 20 minutes to read every day. And then on Saturdays, Father Greg will have a 5, 10, 15 minute video on our YouTube channel to go over what we went, has been gone over for the past week in the book. So we will be in contact with that. So I, I thank Father Greg for doing that. And then on March 19th, hopefully we will be here, but we will also live stream the Mass on March 19th, which is the Solemnity of St. Joseph, and we'll do the consecration prayer together. So I invite you to join us for that. Also, beginning on Ash Wednesday, we will have the Rosary of St. Joseph. Yeah, it's a wonderful rosary. I just looked at it. And we will do that together as a parish. If you wish to partake on Wednesday evenings, the Rosary of St. Joseph, please email me directly jbergsma at hamiltondiocese.com and I will email you the Zoom links and I'll email, email you the documents that we will use. I think it's a wonderful way during Lent that we are able to pray the Rosary of St. Joseph. Like I said, it's a wonderful prayer, so I invite you to join us as well. A big thanks to the Knights of Columbus. Sometime this coming week, the Knights of Columbus have agreed to deliver the envelopes that haven't been picked up yet. So sometime this week, the Knights of, Colum uh, Knights of Columbus will come and put the envelopes in your mailbox. Don't be afraid of them, they're good people, except this guy named Terry Grignon. But the, the other ones are good. <laughs> so we will get the envelopes to you. Also, it has been heartening to see how many people have come to visit the Blessed Sacrament that is in the window. I thank all the people for that. Father Greg and I are like, it's like, wow. Thank you very much for doing that. As you know, the schools will be opening on Monday, tomorrow. And I've noticed that it is very popular, but three to four, there's a lot of cars adoring Jesus. Thank God for that. With the school being open, I ask that you please avoid the three to four hour. And the reason simply for that is, it's pickup of the children. <laughs> there's a lot of cars. The parking lot is cut off, actually. and. There's a lot of moving parts. For safety, if you can avoid the three to four hour, much appreciated. And then finally, I have one question for Karen. Thank you for singing, by the way, and Paul as well. Am I voting Chiefs or Buccaneers? <laughs> That's good. Buccaneers. Paul says Buccaneers, go for the Chiefs. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you and keep you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Please join in our recessional hymn, How Great Thou Art. See? 
sings my song, a Savior God to be. How good thou art, how good thou art. When Christ shall come with shout of a Sings my song.